Hey, it's Dr. Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. In this video, I wanna talk about traditional neurofeedback techniques and how they can actually enhance our meditative practice. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of uh, Buddhist terms and concepts in this video, and they are terms that I described in my previous video, so if you guys wanna watch that one first before getting into this one, it might help if you haven't watched that one already. Uh, if you guys really like this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you get notifications when I upload new content. Really appreciate everybody's support. So so if you guys haven't seen the MindLift video, you might want to watch that one as well. Uh, MindLift is a company that has sort of reversed engineered what uh, Muse has done with neurofeedback. So they've been working closely with the company that makes the Muse called Interaxon, based there in Toronto, Canada, to actually make it to where clinicians can pick specific brain waves to uh, work on with their clients. Um, the Muse meditation headband actually uses uh, EEG data from expert meditators that was fed into machine learning algorithms which created their algorithm overall in which the direct consumer uses, which is great because I think that it can help people redirect their attention to the breath and practice what is called samahati to get deeper and deeper meditative states and experience these pleasure waves called jhana that actually get you addicted to meditation and reach a calm state of equanimity called shamatha, as described in uh, John Yates' Mind Illuminated book, book. But I think that traditional neurofeedback definitely has a role in this as well. Um, so I just described what uh, the Muse headband regular algorithm does and MindLift has designed this online program in which clinicians can actually pick the specific brain waves, the traditional neurofeedback brain waves like alpha, beta, delta, gamma to target uh, for different uh, clinical disorders. And the most common ones are like ADHD, anxiety, and uh, mind dullness. So we're gonna talk about those traditional neurofeedback targets and how they could actually augment meditative practice. If you guys haven't seen MindLift, it uses this uh, additional auxiliary electrode that uh, uses EEG electrode paste that uh, goes on the top of the head, at least for the attention exercises. And it has a really awesome um, software program in which you watch the screen on a tablet like this and concentrate and it uh, determines your brain waves and these little characters move through the game depending on how well you're focused. And I think that can help with regular meditative practice because it's actually promoting brain waves that are effective in meditation. Because the main distractors that happen for people that when they sit down and try to meditate, from what I've noticed in working with clients most often is that they either experience attention difficulties. So when they're focusing on the breath, they become distracted and they can't bring their mind back. And in doing so, they're not really practicing what's called samahati that gets you deeper and deeper into a meditative practice. The second thing that they might experience is anxiety. You know, it's hard to sit there, especially if you have chronic pain or if you have endogenous anxiety, you might feel uh, some feelings of uncomfortability as you sit for that long amount of time while you're meditating. And the other thing is that you might get bored. You might experience what's called mind dullness. If you focus on the breath too much and you don't have other additional techniques to bring in and make meditation fun and elicit those really good feelings, those jhana that uh, come from having a strong meditative practice, you will get bored, you won't want to do it anymore, and it's just not good for anybody, right? Because then you don't develop your meditative practice and you don't achieve the things that you set out to achieve when you started meditation. So the neurofeedback options on MindLift, I think can help with this, and you can use different alternating patterns. You can either do a mind lift exercise and then go into a muse meditation or you could alternate days in which you do mind lift exercises on even days and uh, muse meditation on odd days so that you're promoting certain brain waves in between that will help with the meditative sessions and there's different combinations that you can do I do different combinations with my clients depending on their schedule and my schedule and how much they actually want to devote to mind training daily and it might work better with one person one way and uh, work better with a different person another way but I think doing these things in tandem can really promote um, healthy brain activity that allows you to get in really deep meditative states and reach what's called shamatha, which is that really uh, enhanced state of being in which you can really feel calm, cool, and collected in almost any situation. So the mind lift programs that I think are helpful for those three distractors are 
For instance, if I talk to someone and I feel like they have a lot of attention problems, like they just simply cannot keep their mind on the breath, one of the things that I'll suggest is that we do attention training uh, using mind lift. So in using the Muse headband and that auxiliary electrode and going through the mind lift exercises where they're concentrating on the tablet, it's uh, promoting something called SMR, which is an alpha wave over the motor strip, which corresponds to relaxed attention and lack of movement. Uh, and it also inhibits something called high beta, which is like a um, marker for distraction in terms of uh, brain waves. So you could train that attention with mind lift in off days or between a med or before a meditation session, and that's really helpful for people that get distracted often. You know what. Um, the colloquial term would be ADHD or lesser degrees for it. The other thing that I mentioned was anxiety. So if people are experiencing a lot of anxiety when they sit down and try to meditate with the Muse headband, uh, one thing that we can do is during the in-between sessions where we're using mind lift with the neurofeedback, we can uh, use the relaxation setting, uh, which is really good for uh, anxiety. And the idea is there is that you, um, that you reward inhibition of high beta which is also a sign of anxiety and reward alpha which is a calm resonating brain state in which you just feel really relaxed so teaching people how that feels and getting them into that state i think will train their brain to be more effective during meditation sessions because they can use you know their own self-developed coping mechanisms by going through the neurofeedback to enhance that meditative session and then the third one is the mind dullness. So I, I see this especially with people that are more advanced meditators that have kind of hit a wall and don't seem to be getting any further. You know, they have a regular meditative practice, they know how to focus on the breath. Yeah, they get distracted, but usually they'll be able to bring their mind back, but they're really not experiencing those uh, pleasure waves, those energetic PDs or those uh, spaces of mind called jhana that you pass through as you go through me more uh, advanced stages of meditation. And I think the neurofeedback option for that is the um, mood enhancement or the performance enhancement settings on mind lift. And the performance enhancing setting on mind lift inhibits high beta again, but it also promotes both a theta beta ratio and alpha. So it's really relaxed attention that it promotes and it's perfect for um, enhancing that ability to get into a solid state of samahati during your meditation sessions, which will Will elicit the jhana down on through uh, the meditation session. So, you know, I described how we're using mind lift and um, muse in succession to enhance people's meditative practices. If you guys are interested in doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, head to www.techforpsych.com slash coaching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate the listen. Comment down below with your uh, ideas about all this. And yeah, I thank everybody. See you next week.